This is a short film of how about how you translate the verbs göra, få and bli uh, from Swedish to English. Göra, we have uh, two major verbs in English and that's do that you use when you want to use uh, um, when you want to mean uträtta as in what have you been doing today. You also use do with some nouns such as job homework, work, favor, harm, damage. For example, can you do me a favor? And with some adjectives such as good, best, bad and worst. I did my best to help him. You also use do with nouns that end with ing. For example, father usually does the cooking on Sundays. And then the second major verb that you have uh, used when you want to explain something that you do is uh, make. And, and you use make if you talk about something that is created. For example, um, this furniture is made in Sweden. You also use make often with nouns to replace a verb that means the same thing. For example, make a discovery could replace the verb discover. Or the queen made a promise replaces the verb promise uh, to come to the opening ceremony. And also, if you want to make someone do something, for example, she makes me very happy, or the end of the story made me cry. And then the second verb is the Swedish få, which has uh, several different translations in English. We'll start with can, may, and be allowed to, if you want to get permission to do something. For example, may or can I go now, or they were allowed to start stay the night. Note that if you want to express what you cannot do um, with a strong emphasis, you have to use must not in English or mustn't, same thing, but um, you, can, you, you don't say can't, you say uh, mustn't. We have must and have to, uh, and that means in Swedish to be obliged to do something. He had to leave his car behind. Make, if you want to make someone do something, for example, they made us go with them. Get to, if you want to make something one do something by persuading them, they got us to go with them after ten minutes of discussion, for example. Get to receive and have is when you um, get an object. For example, I got a letter from John. Note that in some expressions we don't have a word for the Swedish verb for. Instead, we use different verbs in English, such as heard, see, uh, hear, see, and learn. For example, we heard on TV or saw in the paper or learnt that the two children had been found. And the last Swedish verb is bli. Uh, they also have five different verbs in English. You use become when you talk about a clear change. He has become rich, which was different from what he was before, or she became a doctor. She wasn't one before, but now she is one. You use the verb be in different ways uh, when you talk about the future. You could also use become here. He will be rich or he will become rich. Uh, if you want to uh, express that there is no change, for example, um, the party was a uh, success. Festen var en framgång i Swedish. Certain adjectives that express um, surprise, such as surprise, amaze, astonish. I was surprised to see him there. Oh, spelling error on C there, should be two E's. Then, of course, also we have get, that you use in casual language. If you go out without an umbrella, you'll get wet, for example. Or he's getting fat, but in Swedish we translate it with li. Grow is used uh, in more formal language, it's another spelling error there. Um, when there's a slow change, for example, if you grow old, he is growing old. Another spelling error, oops. And then we have some expressions um, in English that we in Swedish use bli, but in uh, English we have different verbs such as fall in love with, fall ill, go mad, go blind, come to turn red, turn green. And that ends this short presentation.